Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Vanilla. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, labor analgesia today and I welcome you all to raonline.com. It's of course very divine to alleviate pain and as an anesthetist, we are a part of this beautiful team that takes care of pain during surgery and likewise pain during labor. And if you have ever done a labor analgesia procedure, you would have seen these patients thanking you from the bottom of their heart because it's so helpful to them. So in this next few minutes, we're going to go through the brief overview on history and statistics of how labor analgesia came into being. What are the pain pathways that we as anesthetists need to know? What are the options of analgesia? Some practical points with regards to labor analgesia and what literature evidence we have on epidural analgesia being the gold standard. Okay. Okay, so labor analgesia has a lot of history about it. There have been plenty of myths and controversies whether analgesia should be given to a physiological process, would it affect the way the labor goes and would it affect the mother or the baby. And henceforth, there's been a lot of trials and uh, historically, we have a landmark procedure when James Y. Simpson gave ether for a lady with cephalopephal pelvic disproportion in 1853. And then came the uh, royal uh, anesthesia, as they often say, when John Snow gave chloroform for Queen Victoria for her delivery. And it was well appreciated in the society and by the royalty. Neuraxial analgesia has been talked about since the 1940s, but it's only in the last about three decades or so when it's been fully established, particularly in the syst uh, hospital systems where the infrastructure is good and the labor suite actually has a fully uh, covered anesthesia team present. Uh, without that, this process will not be possible and that's why uh, we need to actually establish a system where labor analgesia can be provided 24-7. So, in India, uh, what are we doing? We have plenty of hospitals that actually provide 24-7 a labor analgesia and obstetric anesthesia cover and this is the way forward indeed. So, what do we know about labor pain? So, there are a lot of factors that actually affect the mother who's got this fetus in here with a lordotic spine and contractions beginning from about here to down below. There's physical factors, physiological and psychological factors modifying the labor pain. So, what do we know about the pain pathways itself is in the first stage, you have the dilatation of the cervix in the lower uterine segment. And here, it's a dull visceral pain and it's conducted through slow C fibers in the early first stage and the early second stage. Later on, the pain gets mediated through the fast A delta fibers, largely somatic pain and this is carried through from T12 to L1 and later on from the S2 to S4 segments as well. 